Next up, as producers make their way through the latest calving season, some are already making plans for the next. But setting up a successful breeding season starts with proper management of postpartum anestrus in beef cows. That's a period of temporary infertility as the animal's body returns to a fertile state. However, this can be particularly challenging with late calving cows. Market Journal's Bill Dodd spoke with UNL cow-calf specialist Casey McCarthy to discuss a few best practices. As producers continue through calving season, one worry at this point in time may be late calving cows. These late arrivals can cause challenges for cattle through a limited breeding season. As such, having an effective plan in place for reproductive health and limiting the impact of anestrus will be paramount to ensuring your cows are well prepared for the next breeding season. Your first concern after calving should be proper management of the postpartum interval. While many variables play into proper PPI management, body condition score will be a big factor in that equation. And so generally, when we think about a postpartum interval, uh, we think about a 365 day calving uh, season. And within that, we've got gestation, which can vary anywhere from 270 to 285 days. That varies uh, depending on breed uh, and age. Uh, but then we have roughly an 80 to 85 day time period of this uh, time frame called uterine involution and postpartum interval. So when we think about managing that postpartum interval, uh, one big factor that we might think about is body condition score. And so when we think about that energy reserve in those females, uh, a really good time point to help that postpartum interval is going to be before calving. And so this is a time period where we move through the later stage of gestation. Uh, we can ultimately increase those body reserves in those females uh, moving into calving. That will impact uh, the rebreeding time point uh, during that postpartum interval. And so we can shorten that interval time period just thinking about targeting our body reserves in those females. And so if we can help those with energy reserves that they already have, uh, that ultimately sets them up for success moving into the breeding season. When it comes to moving late calving cows up in the breeding season, there are some measures producers can take, including the utilization of a controlled intravaginal drug release. So when we think about moving some of our late calvers up in the breeding season, this is targeting some of those later calving cows. Uh, one way that we can do that is utilizing uh, estrus synchronization tools. So one uh, such device would be a CEDAR, which is a controlled internal drug release, uh, intravaginal drug release. And uh, this is a progesterone product. And so ultimately what we're trying to target with these late calving cows is cows that are at least 20 days um, postpartum uh, so we can actually have some impact. And so what we can do is utilizing that progesterone is jumpstart those females so we can get them to cycle earlier. Uh, we do see some that don't respond to that depending on that time frame, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, but this is a great way uh, to target a very select number of cows to help move them up into your breeding, uh, earlier into your breeding season. When planning things like CIDR treatments, the Estrus Synchronization Planner is one recommended resource that is readily available to assist producers in optimal timing of their administration. So this is an Excel-based uh, spreadsheet that ultimately lets you uh, select a different synchronization protocol, lets you enter uh, when you want to calve, maybe what your breeding day or time might look like, uh, and then also the type of cows and then the products you're using. And so what this spreadsheet will do is compare different protocols uh, and then throw everything into a really nice calendar and uh, a spreadsheet where you can then go and say, yep, we're gonna you know, pull a cedar on this day, maybe we'll give a shot on this day, and then we have X number of hours before we breed. And so you can compare a number of different protocols if you're thinking about fixed time AI, uh, maybe you're thinking about just utilizing some type of heat detection or uh, utilizing an MGA product. Uh, those will throw all of that in your calendar and allow you to figure out when the best time uh, to administer products uh, and, and work through different protocols will be. And so it's a really nice uh, tool to use um, that'll give you a lot of different comparisons. Above all else, 
when it comes to setting up for a successful breeding season, one of the most valuable assets you'll have will be your own records. I think when we're thinking about managing this postpartum interval and anestrus, uh, really looking back at uh, your notes and records during calving will be important to think about maybe where those cows were at in terms of body condition. Um, if we had any difficulties with calving, uh, then we can allow those cows maybe a little extra time or we can identify some of those late calving cows. And so I think records uh, and, and keeping really good notes will help with that, as well as understanding where those females are at in terms of condition, and then ultimately where they're at in terms of, of uh, calving date in relation to the start of the breeding season. So being able to identify those important dates and and being able to take a look at those cows uh, throughout these different time points either during gestation, moving into calving, and then into breeding season will be really important to be successful. As you consider moving late calving cows up in the breeding season, remember, keeping a close eye on BCS scores and proper postpartum interval management will be key things to consider once calving has occurred. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.